Welcome back to the live coverage of the sixth GOP debate. This is uh, InfoWars. I'm David Knight. With me is Leanne McAdoo and Jakari Jackson. And you just missed a shout out to Lindsey Graham in the audience. It's so sad <laughs> that you, you missed that if you were uh, waiting to come back to this. Now they're just asked a question to uh, uh, Ben Carson. Let's go back to the debate and get his answer here. So we need to take that away from them. The way to take that away from them is to talk to our military officials and ask them, what do you need in order to accomplish this goal? Our decision is then, do we give them what they need? I say yes, not only do we give them what they need, but we don't tie their hands behind their backs so that they can go ahead and get the job done. In addition to that, in addition to that, so that's his foreign policy. Let's ask our military leaders what they need and let's not tie their hands. Done. <laughs> and that's what we're hearing from all these guys. I mean, yeah, in these one kind way of or another, yeah. Boilerplate generalities keep hearing. And it's coming out of there because there might be a person in it. Give me a break. Just tell them that you put a people in there, we're going to bomb them. So I'm interested. Oh, yeah. There's, there, yeah. Mr. Christian, we, we break off because sometimes we think we might kill innocent people. Just give me a break. Just tell them if you go in that area, we're going to kill you. Well, they keep talking about giving the military everything they need. Why don't you start limiting their enemies so they have less people to fight? Why don't you stop arming the people that they're fighting against? That's something they need so yeah. they can actually go home to their wives and children. Yes. Right, I just was telling that story tonight. The woman that's trying to sue Twitter for giving ISIS a platform, her husband was going in and trying to train some moderates to be, you know, police the city and they killed him. Support mm. for its oh. coalition. If it removes Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, and I quote, the now king of Saudi Arabia told us, you can have our army, you just got to deal with Assad. The Emir of Qatar said, I'll pay for the operation. Oh yeah, Ms. Lindsay, I agree with that. We should be telling everybody <laughs> who their president should be, and we should threaten them. We should, just like we did with Iran. That's what I would do if I was president. Yeah. I mean, what do we Shut up. <laughs> you don't get a lawyer. <laughs> That's right. Shut up. We decide who your president's going to be. <laughs> you don't like it? We'll do a CIA coup or we'll bomb you into dust. That's what their foreign policy has been. My That's pretty much what it is, is uh, yeah. Lindsey Graham just blow up <laughs> yeah. you know, half the planet. He's killed now over. I'd be interested to find out uh, from Darren McBreen if Rand Paul has been chiming into this debate and tweeting about it. Who called Assad a reformer. She called Assad a reformer. Now, the fact is what this president... Now, here, here's the issue, okay? Do you really think that Assad is worse than ISIS? They act as if Assad and ISIS are the same. Yeah. Okay? They don't even recognize that they're, that they're fighting each other, okay? Mm -hmm. They didn't even recognize the fact that if they're going to depose Assad, then we're going to wind up with ISIS there. But, of course, that's precisely what they want because that will justify a larger military. Right. It'll justify boots on the ground. We can go in then and bomb them and so forth. But they pretend that they're on opposite sides, and the American public goes for this. I mean, not only is it an affront to tell us that they didn't create an arm ISIS and continue to do so, but then they want to tell us that these people are on the same side. Yeah. And nobody's here cheer is cheerleading for Assad. It's just the fact that, they, as you're saying, these guys are fighting each other once again, as you're pointing out. Yeah. We are funding the people that are actually fighting Assad. And then Assad saying we have to go kill Assad because he's supposedly teamed up with ISIS. And we're, and we're funding the revolts everywhere. If you look at what happened in Benghazi, they want to talk about Benghazi and all the time, okay? But talk about why we had to overthrow Omar Gaddafi. He was a problem at one point in time, but he had been basically not causing anybody a problem. Mm -hmm. And then when we overthrew Gaddafi, what did we wind up with? We wound up with Libya now being the arms bazaar for all of these radical Islamists. And the same thing is going to happen in Syria. Uh, Assad is not a good guy, but you're going to wind up with another Libya, which is precisely what they want. Mm -hmm. They want chaos. They want continuous war. According to Facebook, it was the most talked about moment online of your entire campaign, with more than 10 million people talking about the issue. Well, Including well, Louis Farrakhan, who actually Mulder agreed dash. with it. Yeah, good point, Rob. Yeah, yeah. Louis Farrakhan agreed. Yeah. <laughs> we have to stop with political correctness. We have to get down to creating a country 
that's not going to have the kind of problems that we've had with people flying planes into the World Trade Centers, with the with the shootings in California, with all the problems all over the world. I just left Indonesia, bomb, 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 bomb. We have to find out what's going on. I said temporarily. I didn't say permanently. I said temporarily. Yeah, they always leave that out. Yeah, until the vetting, pro I mean, they admit the vetting process is an issue. Uh, Obama says they can't, the, the program doesn't work to vet people who buy guns, but yet you're yeah. going to invite people in the country yeah, exactly. pretend they're not, may, might not be terrorists. Gun owners, yeah, we need background checks. Uh, Islamists from areas that were fighting people who are, you know, the system's no problem. Hey, guys, one thing I'm hearing now, Mikhail just uh, popped in and said that Rand Paul is the only candidate trending on Twitter right now. And look, you can watch him. He's on Periscope just yeah. talking. Right well, now. that's what I was just asking. I was curious if he had been chiming into the debate at all. Good. Donald, Donald, can I... And there's his Twitter, so oh, he literally no, flips off yeah. the media after debate firestorm. There it is. And I guess I guess Jeb gets to come in because Donald mentioned the word stupid, and Jeb <laughs> identifies with that. Wait, he's talking about me. <laughs> I was saying, you know, he's like that. Seen, Clearly, that was directed at me, so I'm gonna chime in. We, we've seen Jeb, and we've seen W, and I guess the question is, what about Marvin? And I think there's another brother. I, mean, are they still, <laughs> I don't even. Are they still in the attic? Uh, yeah, they're afraid to let them out because. Up. <laughs> Let the smart boys out. Well, that's what they have with with years and years of family inbreeding. You're yeah. always going to have one wild card that you got. Whatever their problem is, I don't know. People, <laughs> you know, the Islamic terrorists inside, embedded in refugee populations. What we ought to do is tighten up our efforts to deal with the entry visa program, so that a citizen from Europe, it's harder to, if they've been traveling to Syria or traveling these other places where there is Islamic terrorism, make it harder. Make the screening take place. We don't have to have refugees come to our country, but all Muslims. Seriously? What kind of signal does that send to the rest of the world that the United States is... Can you be a president if you got an H-1B visa? You said that he... Hey. <laughs> I mean, it's like They're setting the president now. I mean, basically, I, we could make a good case that there's not anybody that we see qualified to be president here. So maybe we should have an H-1B visa uh, and let open this up for the global economy because obviously citizenship doesn't matter anymore. So let's, uh, let's open it up for visas. With Mr. Trump... <laughs> They could come in for just no, not four years at a time. Absolutely not. I can see why people are angry. And I president. Because and president. president has created a condition where our national security has weakened dramatically. I totally get that. But the, we're, we're running for presidency of the United States here. Oh, we are? This isn't, this isn't you know, a different <laughs> You figured that out. You have to lead. You cannot make rash statements. They call me Jeb. I heard that. The rest of the world to uh, respond as though, well, it's just politics. Every time we, we send signals like this, we send a signal of weakness, not strength. And so it was an unhitched, unhitched statement, which is why I'm asking him to consider changing his views. I want security for this country, okay? I want security. I'm tired of seeing what's going on between the border where the people flow over, people come in, they live, they shoot. I want security for this country. We have a serious problem with, as you know, with radical Islam. We have a tremendous problem. It's not only a problem here, it's a problem all over the world. I want to find out why those two young people, those two horrible young people in California, when they shot the 14 people, killed them, people they knew, people that held a wedding reception for them. I want to find out. Many people saw pipe bombs and all sorts of things all over their apartment. Why weren't they vigilant? Why didn't they call? Why didn't they call the police? And by the way, the police are the most mistreated people in this country. I will tell you that. The most mistreated people. But can I say we need, wait a minute, we need vigilance. We have to find out. Many people knew about what was going on. Why didn't they turn those two people in so that you wouldn't have had all the death? There's something going on, and it's bad. And I'm saying we have to get to the bottom of we, it. That's all I'm saying. We, we hear, need security. We want to hear from all of you on this. But, you uh, know, according to Pew Research, the U.S. admits more than 100,000 Muslim immigrants. Well, I got to say, I'm looking at Twitter right now, and 
Rand Paul has been answering questions from Twitter that, that the people are actually asking him rather than uh, a lot of these hand-picked questions that the commentators will ask. And he's, it's That's right here live in the, the video. And that they're asking here no, because it's, these questions don't really uh, reflect on anything. I mean, they could you could go back and pull up the same questions they had four years ago, eight years ago, 12 years ago. So what kind of questions does he get? So he's, I mean, he's actually getting more followers and he is um, the number one trending topic of the debate and then Donald Trump is is the second in second place so he's not even here he's not even participating in this debate, debate. <laughs> uh, they're asking you know what will you do to limit NSA spying um, well I think that's great he may have found a way to uh, as Do Donald Trump has found a way with making outrageous statements to get around the uh, the control of the, the media conglomerates. And now Rand Paul has found a way to get around the control of the media conglomerates uh, we, using social media, essentially in a, in a, in like, like Donald Trump did. But now this is using it in a way where they're talking substantively about issues instead right. of just throwing firebombs. And hopefully this will be his breakout moment. Yeah, and he has always been in the forefront with using social media. He's one of the only candidates that is on pretty much every single platform, which is why he came out of the gate running and was doing so well uh, before Trump came out. But yeah, I mean, this was really impressive. That's great. It would be safe. That's the end of the conversation. I can tell you, after spending seven years as a former federal prosecutor, right after 9-11, dealing with this issue, here's the way you need to deal with it. You can't just ban all Muslims. You have to ban radical Islamic jihadists. You have to ban the people who are trying to hurt us. And the only way to figure that out... How are we going to do that? The FBI yeah. said they can't vet them. The yeah. Community, the funding and the tools that it needs... Oh, to be able to keep that's how you do it, Rob. You give a blank check to the police industrial complex. You're going to buy some more computers and some equipment, you know, like those uh, useless scanners that they put at the TSA. <laughs> you know, that's the way you do it. Yeah. <laughs> you find some of your buddies who have a company and you spend billions of dollars buying useless equipment from them. Donald's topped in some of that anger that's out there about this whole issue because this president has consistently underestimated the... Probably get it from the same people that make the BS detectors, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Terrorist detector, BS, BS detector. Detectors. Of course, the BS detectors don't seem to be working too well for the public in terms of these debates. Well, even with those uh, TSA scanners, you know, we saw a report just, uh, I believe it just the end of last year, the guy who flew, uh, I believe it was a trucker, had a pistol in his carry-on bag. You know, they couldn't catch it in all the other reports of multiple people going through uh, doing tests where they couldn't find weapons on them. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, John Corbett pointed that out, too. Yeah. We do not know who you are, and we do not know know why you are coming. When I am president, you are not getting into the United States of America. Senator Cruz, where do you stand? <laughs> Unless you come through Cuba, which is all about Cuba. <laughs> Senator Cruz. You see, that's the whole thing. It's like uh, everything is uh, forbidden to us unless the government expressly permits it. But of course, everybody in the world is permitted to come here unless we can somehow find a reason to keep them out. I mean, that's everything is upside down. As an apologist for radical Islam, that'll be a good reason for somebody to immigrate to the United States. That'll be known. Focused like a laser on keeping this country safe and on defeating radical Islamic terrorism. What should we do? First, we should pass the Expatriate Terrorist Act legislation I've introduced. That that says if an American goes and joins ISIS and wages jihad against America, that you forfeit your citizenship and you cannot come in on a passport. Yeah, they could become a Canadian citizenship, a and citizen, so and then they could run for president. Pass so. the legislation that I've introduced <laughs> that suspends. I like how PolitiFact put that up as mostly false, even though we have three agency heads saying that they don't have the data to properly vet in congressional testimony. And they're going to go, right. yeah. Yeah, it's mostly false. Mostly yeah. false. Mostly so they, false. they can't uh, completely rule yeah. it out. Yeah. Terrorist. If I am elected president, <laughs> yeah, we will joke. not let in refugees from countries controlled by ISIS or Al-Qaeda. And when it comes to... It's ISIS, like a Princess Bride. He's mostly dead. Them, <laughs> we will utterly and completely destroy ISIS. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. We'll stop. Except for all the lone wolves in the country. That's why we need the NSA to ramp it back up. Well, first of all, I recognize it, it is a substantial problem. But like all of our problems, there isn't a single one that can't be solved uh, that cannot be solved with common sense if you remove the ego and the politics. And clearly what we need to do is get a group of experts together, uh, including people from other countries, some of our friends from Israel, who've had